Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today let's take a look at this Knipex knife. Or is it Knipex knife? Or Knipex knife? Anyway, Knipex uh, avoids the whole discussion by calling this thing um, an electrician's folding cutter, which is probably a good name for it. Uh, it's a little unusual. Uh, I'm not too sure about it. And here's why. First of all, it's a standard slip joint knife. Real common, it means there's no locking mechanism. This has a, uh, a fairly stiff joint, a real solid snap into the 90 degree position and into the 180, um, but there is no lock. Whereas all of these have a lock position, meaning um, you can't accidentally close the knife on your fingers. Um, another thing right off the bat, before we use it is this area right here appears to be, you know, I mean, it's a cable cutter or a sheath or insulation cutter. I'll show you some uses for that, but it also looks a lot like what's called a finger choil. And that's where you'd put your finger uh, for kind of choking up on the knife for some more detailed work. I mean, it's pretty common. Like here's that, that Gerber um, that I reviewed earlier. This uh, has a, a fairly pronounced finger choil right there, designed to choke up. This is a uh, Kershaw here, and this guy's got a strong finger choil for moving completely off the handle and up onto the blade. Um, this is a CRKT here, and you can see they've got a transitional point where you're moving away from the handle, you know, and you've got a big kind of thumb depression there and a finger, index finger depression there. And here's a SOG, this one, um, isn't as pronounced, but it's definitely a viable use for that. So you can easily drop your finger into this position um, to use that knife. So that's kind of what it looks like. So you want to make sure you don't do that because that is a very sharp cutting edge. It has a sheep foot blade. That means it just drops right down. So it's a little bit harder to get a, um, a poke or a, some sort of a stab into something you don't want. Um, such as a wire. Uh, it does have um, a 50 millimeter blade. And this is kind of interesting. The number of this thing is the 162050. And usually the last two digits or the last two or three digits on a uh, Knipex tool are the length in millimeters. And if I look at this, get my millimeter tape here out and line this thing up, you can see, get it up close there, that it's about 50 millimeters. So I'm guessing that's where that came from. Um, the entire blade is 80 millimeters, and the handle here is 120. So if you look at the uh, stats back here, this says, here's the number. It's 120 millimeters full length, but this says the blade is 80, and it's not really the cutting blade. It includes the entire thing, 85 grams. It's pretty light, and because it's so light, um, it's made with a, um, a plastic that I find tremendously slippery. Um, in fact, about the only grip is, is this little bit of texture where the billboarding on the side with the Knipex name is. Otherwise, it's a, it's a slippery plastic. Um, it does have a lanyard hole here, and it does have what they uh, call kind of a, a, a grippy point on the uh, knife so you can easily pull it open. Um, so what do you do with this thing? Well, it, it's a cutter, it's a knife, and it comes from the factory plenty sharp. You know, this is the, um, make sure I get the blade. You can see that's straight from the factory. This uh, smaller blade, um, which to me almost feels backwards, so I'm, I'm figuring out how to use it. Um, you can see is still fairly sharp. Um, I've been playing with it. Uh, obviously this does traditional cutting tasks. But what else can you do? Well, one of the things that you can do with this knife, uh, and this is another sketchy area, is you can hold it in this position, put a piece of wire into this recessed area, and then close down on it and cut the wire off. There you go. So it acts kind of like a wire cutter. Um, oddly, it's also like a guillotine, though, because you've got your hand exposed while you're trying to smash this this blade down. And if you're using it, uh, if you're trying to, to cut, you can also take a piece of wire and you can rotate it on here. If you try to do that when this thing's closed, I'll show you here, I can put this in, 
right there and I could spin the knife or spin the wire um, to strip it and then I could pull it off. I've got to make sure I, don't, I keep my hands uh, any part away because if you slip something underneath there, well, you can, once you pull this out, um, I mean, it's a, it's pretty crazy. I almost lost the knife there. Um, but you can also slam it shut too as you pull it out and close it. So it's a little bit of a sketchy use that way. You know, most of us probably strip wires, you know, the old fashioned way. You're pushing away from yourself. This, if you look at the angle of it, you can't see it when you're pushing away if you're right handed. Normally, if it would be the other way, and then you would be pushing it and be able to see it. So you could quickly make a score and then slide it off, but I don't know. And then, so I was thinking, well, is it for scoring? I guess maybe, maybe you can see it there or something. Something else though, I tried this with Romex and it, the same thing happens with, with standard round wire. You can put it in and try to, you know, keep a loose fit on the, on the blade. This is, I think, pretty dang dangerous. Um, so you can spin it to cut through as long as you don't, you know, and then slide the insulation off. Again, you got this snap, this spring-loaded guillotine here that could get you. And then you could work with the wires once they're out. Little test piece here, so I could open it up like that, drop the wire in, do a quick spin, and slide that out. Whoops, pulled it out of the room, X. I'm gonna cut myself this anyway, so there it easily strips that out. So you can do it with a thing that looks like a lot like a pocket knife. See how it's wheeling itself out of that little notch? Um, and then pull it out to strip it. So you can see. And so you can do these things with this knife. Uh, is that the best tool for the job? Well, if it's the only tool you got, you can certainly do that. To me, the cutting isn't as bad. That's not quite as dangerous. There are lots of things that, that do this. Generally, they have a, a depression closer in the handle here, so you don't have to have so much of the blade out um, when you're squeezing um, because it's still a little risky. But anyway, it's made in Germany. In fact, the steel they mention uh, is from uh, Solgen, uh, Solgen, which is known for making just fabulous knives uh, or knife steel, lots of blades, lots of different kinds. They say it's a stainless steel blade, so it should put up to a lot of abuse. Um, I've been cutting a bunch of wires and you can see there's really no damage to this blade yet. Um, and of course, being nice and sharp, I've used it on a handful of different things and it's really holding an edge. That's not unusual with stainless steel. The hard part is often getting the edge back on once it's off. But for a lot of minor cuts, minor cutting tasks over and over, um, it'll probably stay sharp for quite a while. But anyway, that's my first impression of this uh, Knipex, um, Knipex knife. Uh, and with that, Doc out.